In this video I'm going to do a tutorial on how to draw fur and I'm going to show you three different kinds of fur. Long fur, black fur and white fur. I'm going to give you my tips and tricks on how to draw fur and hopefully this will help you improve your own artworks. When I'm drawing fur I always start with sketching. Here you can see I just sketch out basically how the fur is going, what direction and the different layers and parts of fur. When you have longer fur, you can see that the fur comes together in different parts and it's easier to tell the different layers from each other. Therefore it's also important to sketch it out to begin with so you don't get lost. Here in my first layer, I'm doing my layer very lightly. And then once I'm done with my base colors, I go over it with the Mona Lisa Odeless Paint Thinner. I start with the black area, then I clean my brush and go over the brown. Here I'm just darkening up some parts that were too light. Once I've done that, I start adding details, but notice that I'm still using light colors. You don't want to go too dark too fast, so watch your strokes and slowly build up your colors, especially with colored pencil that you can't really erase or go over with lighter colors. It's important to take it slowly and build up the areas. And also leave out the white of the paper on the areas you want to be light. What I see in a lot of new artists is that they get overwhelmed by larger areas of fur that they have to cover. And maybe they keep losing track of where they are in the reference photo, so thereby a uh, sketch is really important. But also, a lot of people tend to just scribble when they get overwhelmed and they just scribble away in different kind of directions that aren't very natural and flowy but instead just get very um, straight and harsh. Also it gets too dark too quickly. Many people want to cover an area quickly with a very dark color and then they just scribble away and <laughs> it goes fast, yeah. But it's not having that natural flowy feel that long fur has. One of the ways to avoid this is to take a close look at your reference photo and then follow the direction of the fur and also the length of the fur with your pencil. Don't just draw straight lines because you'll get overwhelmed. Instead try to draw curved lines because fur will naturally have a curve. Also because of this curve light will hit the fur pretty much in the center of the strands or the clumps of fur. So thereby try to shade a darker color in the start and in the end of the fur, and a lighter color in the middle. A good idea is just try to throw away the illusion you have in your head of what fur should look like, and then just really look at your reference photo. I use this technique a lot where I add fleeting bits of fur that goes away from the direction of the other pieces of fur, because natural fur will have this. In your head, that's not something you usually think of, but it will add a really natural touch to your drawing. And I do this in both light and dark colors to add dimension. And as you can see here, I began working on the short black fur. When I'm drawing black fur, I want to avoid the area looking flat. So what I do is I bring in a lot of color. I bring in some blue and some violet. And this will help me create dimension and make my dark areas look darker and not as flat. The thing I begin with is making a base layer that will guide me to how light my light areas will be. I don't want white on top of black, uh, because that's not going to look very realistic and it's going to be way too sharp a highlight, so instead I want this very light bluish grey. And just like with the long fur, once I got my base layer down, I use my pen thinner to just smoothen everything out. I want my base layer to have a lot of pigment to soak into the grain of the paper so it won't show up as much later on. Also here, even though I'm drawing some very dark fur, I'm still taking my time building up my colors slowly and slowly making a gradient towards the colors that I want. Don't go forward too fast because you can't go back again. So slowly build up those grays, those purples to get a nice vibrant dark area. Because I work with paint thinner, I don't care too much about adding detail on the first couple of layers on my dark fur. 
Instead, I try to build up colors and get the right saturation and also the right value between light and dark. I want my dark areas to be very dark and my light areas to keep being this light gray base color. Once I have achieved that and I feel like I like the contrast that I've got, I will start adding details. I added details with a dark grey and a black and also a dark indigo. Once I've done this I will slowly go over it gradually with first the light grey then a light blue and at the end I'll add some white. Once I've added the white I sometimes add a bit of touch up with the darker pencils just because sometimes you lighten up an area too much. When you're drawing white fur try not to think of it as white. Much like black fur, it's going to suck up the colors of its surrounding and that's going to be implemented in the shadows and the highlights. So what I do when I draw white fur is I use my color dropper tool and I take a close look at the reference to really see what colors are in the fur. I always start off with a white base layer and for this I use my white polychromos just to give my paper a nice base of white just to keep it light enough. Then I'll go in with a uh, light color in this instance a warm gray and a cold gray number one from Polychromos and I'll just slightly sketch out where I want the fur to be. And then I just slowly begin to build up my depth and my colors and my shadows. The key point when you're drawing white fur is to take your time and do it slowly because you only have one shot you can't really rework it because if you have covered the white of the paper showing through you're not really going to have it turned back to white. I really recommend using the color drop tool that you can find in Paint or Photoshop or GIMP or any other drawing uh, program you can get on your computer to pick out the colors, especially in the lightest areas because what is white is rarely white in reality and that's a good trick to teach your mind to see the colors for what they really are and not the illusion of what you think it has to be. So if I have to sum all the things up, what I would say is Keep an eye on the direction of the fur growth and also the length. Next is to really follow your reference closely and keep a flowy natural feel to your fur. And the last thing is take your time and enjoy creating the art that you're creating. Try not to worry too much about the finished piece but enjoy what you're doing instead. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found some useful tips. If you did, please like this video, maybe leave a comment and subscribe if you want to see more from me.